I'd like to get back to something that was mentioned earlier in the discussion, but I'd like to expand on it a little bit if we could. And Gavin, I, I, I'll start with you. Uh, the CLCPA puts a sin pretty significant emphasis on environmental justice and economic equity. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about the social justice aspects of this law? Well, uh, under the law, 40% of the revenue that is raised for any of these programs to implement, according to the statute, is to go to be directed towards disadvantaged environmental justice areas. Uh, there's a real problem there. I mean, in, in the 50s and the 60s, a lot of power plants, other industries were located in New York City, in the outer boroughs, and then folks moved in. And these, were, these businesses, whether a power plant or a recycling facility, are still there. And these people are subjected to higher health impacts than the rest of us. Um, so me, I've become more and more sympathetic to this issue. And something has to be done, but we have to do it correctly. And, and I think if anything that is positive has come out of this Climate Council so far, it has forced people who come from different perspectives to get in a room and try to figure these problems out. And, um, but the, what the public should realize is that the law requires 40% of any funding to go to those communities. So that's going to be somewhat of a redistribution of wealth. Um, it's going to, uh, to have a huge impact on those local communities and hopefully in a favorable way, but at the same time maintaining reliability and affordability. Yeah, it's a big part of the law. I was going to say, it's, I think it's an underestimated part of the exactly. law. Exactly. Uh, there is a lot of uh, socioeconomic <coughs> uh, policy here that, you know, for example, the, these major offshore wind projects, one of the, one of the criteria by which uh, bids are being judged is the extent to which they're going to provide job opportunities or minority business opportunities in disadvantaged communities. Um, the law, we, we expect, and I think the scoping plan is going to have some guidance for the state to how much should be spent upgrading housing in disadvantaged communities. There's even suggestions that not just providing uh, renewable power to these um, uh, public housing, but also to, to uh, finance community-owned uh, power generation, particularly in a renewable space. So that's a major element, uh, making sure that you know, persons think of, if we're going to move to electric vehicles, one of the things we have less of is uh, garages. Are, are we going to, to, there's a major component of the act to make sure we're retraining, whether you're uh, in an energy sector, whether you're uh, working in the natural gas uh, supply system today in a job that's not going to be here in 20 years, to make sure that these, these economic disruptions in people's lives uh, are, are part of the, the, uh, the, the implementation plan as well. So that's a major component of the act. Yeah, and I think for us, you know, planning around where you build some of these facilities. Gavin mentioned that some of these facilities were built on the generating side, people moved in. I'll tell you, on the local distribution side, we're going to have to do a lot more of it. So you think of even better Con Edison, you know, putting all these cars, uh, electrifying all these cars are going to be like the equivalent of building some skyscrapers on some of these circuits. Where are they going to find the land to put another substation within those communities that you're serving? It's not a generating plant. It has maybe a visual impact, but it's got reliability impacts too. And sometimes those investments are made in your load pockets where you have densely populated communities. But that's a good thing because they have high reliability. And so we have to grapple with it. I think one thing that Gavin said earlier is that we're all getting into a room and thinking about being more sensitive to it and making sure we understand all sides of the argument so communities that feel impacted have their voice heard. And we're really working with those communities to make sure that these investments are situated properly within those communities if they have to be.